Hello everybody, this is Brother Shane McCann up here at Oasis Ministries and tonight I want to uh, talk to you about Christ dying for the ungodly and I and I preached on this here a while back down at uh, Johnson Park and uh, so I, I want to kind of teach on it and it's found in Romans uh, chapter 5 and uh, we'll start in uh, the verse 1 it said therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope make not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. And this is one of the scripture I want to concentrate on. It said, when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. You know, I got to really thinking about that scripture there, and that's what I want to focus on. You know, uh, we sang a song uh, uh, up here at uh, Oasis, and uh, it, it's called There is Jesus. You know, and I, I think about that a lot, and I think about this scripture here. But here, you know, uh, in, even in my case, when I didn't have the strength to say no to drugs, or I didn't have the strength to say no to alcohol, or I didn't have the strength to say no to uh, sexual immorality, and things like that, you know, Christ had died for me, uh, me being in an ungodly state to, uh, you know, to give me the strength that I could say yes to Christ and no to those those things. And that's what this is talking about, that Christ died for the ungodly. Me and Cindy was talking about this on the way up, and I asked her, I said, uh, if you look through the Bible, who would you consider acted in un ungodly ways? And she brought up how David, he acted ungodly when he uh, lusted after Bathsheba on the roof, and he had that ungodly affair with her. And uh, then she brought up, you know, how Moses, he, he, he acted in an ungodly way when he killed the Egyptian, and, uh, you know, and uh, things like that. And uh, when I got to thinking about the ungodly, I got to thinking about King Manasseh. We go all the way back to King Manasseh in the Bible, and, and the Bible said that he done evil above all of them. He sacrificed his own sons into the fire to the god Moloch, and uh, he done all kind of ungodly things. He shed blood in Jerusalem, made blood run uh, high as almost a horse's bridle. And uh, he, he, he was eventually, uh, the, they said he was even responsible for killing the prophet Isaiah. Uh, uh, cut, cut the, some say they cut Isaiah in two and they let the hogs uh, eat out of him. And some say that he was hit, hidden in a log and the, they hunt him down and, and uh, you know, uh, cut him there in the log. But however, he was a very ungodly man and he was afflicted and put in prison. And later on, he called out to God even though he was so ungodly, he called out to God and, 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 and God brought deliverance down, got him out of prison and even restored him back to being a king for a certain amount of time. And he eventually has a son called Hezekiah. And uh, so there's all kind of un, ungodly people in the Bible. And then this week I was reading, this is what brought me this scripture. I was uh, reading about King Herod. And when King Herod was on the throne, when Jesus was being born to Joseph and Mary, and King Herod found out about it, and he knew that his kingship was going to be threatened. Now, King Herod was a very ungodly man, and uh, he, uh, he uh, that angel of the Lord had to come to Joseph in a dream and tell Joseph to take Mary and baby Jesus and uh, go uh, down to Egypt. And they had to make this 420-mile journey all the way down to Egypt. I don't know if they'd done it by camel or what. Some say it took maybe seven to ten days. I don't know how long it took. But... Uh, this man being ungodly, he, he wanted a wise man to go find out where Jesus was so he could come and worship him. And uh, they, they said they would bring word, but they didn't. So he found out that he was being mocked and he was very, he become very angry. And he sent to kill all the babies, two years old and under. This was like one of the most ungodly acts that we could think of in the Bible. And it said uh, it was called Rachel's children. And it said there was great lamentation and Rachel weeping for her children. He'd done this very ungodly act. And not only that, he let them dress him up in all this uh, array and put him on a horse and, and, and worship him and call him God and not a man. But eventually that his ungodly acts, uh, the Bible said that an angel of the Lord had to smoke him in his loins for this. But uh, very ungodly. 
But, you know, Christ died for the ungodly. No matter what ungodly deeds that we've done, no matter how many evil deeds we've done, you may say, Brother Shane, I'm, I'm a bad drug addict. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an alcoholic. I'm no good, you know. And, uh, but, you know, uh, that's why Jesus came. That's the very reason he came. That's the very reason why he died on the cross for us, to save us of our, all of our ungodly acts and things that we have done. But he said he, in due time he died for the ungodly. You know, when we were without strength, but you know, there was one time when Jesus was on the cross and he was without strength. When you think about all the blood that he shed on the cross and the atonement that he made for us on the cross and, and uh, the, the strength that was leaving his body and the anxiety that come into his body and the torment and the pain that come in, into his body. You know, he was without strength at one time, you know, but he, he was without strength to give us strength, you know, that he, uh, he, he became poor to, so that we could become rich. You know, he gave up his throne and came down here and, and took an old wooden cross and, and took our place and died for all of our ungodly acts. And we look all through the Bible and we see people that lived in an ungodly way. The Romans that, that pierced him with the sword, the Romans that crucified him, and the Romans that mocked him. They was all very ungodly, you know. And, and Christ had to look up to heaven and say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And it was all this ungodly act. But, you know, Christ died for all of our ungodly deeds. Deeds. And, you know, I thank the Lord for that. You know, in verse 7, it said, For scarcely for a righteous man one will die, yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commanded his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, I tell people this, that sin is very powerful. That sin will take everything you got including your mind we, we find out we find that out with the demonic in, in gardenia we find it out with the prodigal son that took all his uh, inheritance and he wasted it on wild living and the bible said he ended up in a pig pen and he didn't have his right mind the bible said that he had to come to his right mind and then uh he he, he said I, I will return back to my father so that shows me how powerful that sin is but the bible said where sin abound grace doth much more abound you know, and we can get to this place where we have sinned so much that that it just feels that so ungodly that that God would feel thousands of miles away from us that that God couldn't save nobody like us. But I'm here to tell you, He can save the most wicked of the wicked. He can save the most ungodly person that there is. And I, I thank God tonight that He saved me. You know, I was very ungodly, and I'd done a lot of wicked deeds and evil deeds, but God saved me. And it said, God commended His love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us in verse 9 he said much more than being now justified by his blood in other words uh declared not guilty we shall be saved from wrath through him and i want to say something here tonight you know jesus did die for our past our present and our future sins he died for all that he made blood atonement for all that but however, we cannot just go out here tonight and just willfully sin and think, well, God's got that covered. Jesus died for that, you know, and I don't got to worry about that. No, he, uh, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. You know, unconfessed sin is not cleansed by the blood. We must uh, confess our sin every day. Yes, he made blood atonement for the sins that we will confess to him and they can be forgiven and they can be washed and uh, we can be cleansed. But we cannot be uh, cleansed from sin that has not been repented of. You know, and there's a teaching out there that says, you know, that, that uh, Christ paid for our sins for tomorrow, that you don't got to worry about it. You know, and, uh, you know, it's past, present, and future. You know, you just, uh, you know, you, you just get saved and that's it. No, I, I, before I go to bed at night, I have to say, Lord, forgive me of my sins, my faults, my failures, my weaknesses, my mistakes. The part of me that makes me a man, you know, human, you know, forgive me of that. You know, we have to confess. We have to confess our sin. And watch this. He said, uh, you know, he said that we shall be saved from wrath through him. You know, Bible said, he that knoweth the Son... Uh, you know, uh, he that knoweth the Son, the Son shall make free. But, you know, if you do not know the Son, the Bible said that the wrath of God abideth on, uh, on you. We don't want the wrath of God on us. He said, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, watch as much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And I want to get down here in the blood atonement. And not only so, but we also joy in God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have 
now received the atonement, wherefore by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. You know, the Bible said that in Adam I'll die, but in Christ I shall be made alive. You know, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, that's why we see the world in the shape it is in today. You can't blame God. A lot of people get mad at God about uh, this uh, pandemic that's going on and, and everything that, that's going on, you know, and people dying, you know, and, and things like that. But you, it all started in the garden. You know, a lot of people ask me, so Shane, oh, where did this COVID-19 come from? And, 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 and why do we have this pandemic and everything? We have to go all the way back to the Garden of Eden and we find out where Adam and Eve, they transgress against God with the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And when they did, sin entered in. And that's why we have so much suffering and so much death and so much pain and so much heartache and, and all that. that. That's what entered into the world. But you see, Christ died to, uh, so that we could be forgiven of all that, all that sin and all that pain and all that heartache and all that misery. He died, amen, so that we could be grafted in to his cross and into his death and so that we can be reconciled to God. It said, Nevertheless, death reigned rain from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is a figure of him that was to come. But as the offense, so also the free gift, for it through the offense of one man he be dead, much more by the grace of God and by the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. You know, I want to stop our and, and say this. Where sin abound, grace doth much more abound. And a lot of times it's the sin of, uh, of society that causes people to die. Like when people get killed in car wrecks to, uh, from a drunk driver and things like that. It's the uh, sin of society, you know, the sin that they have allowed th uh, uh, them to uh, dabble into into society that causes us. sometimes it's not God's fault, sometimes it's not the devil's fault, sometimes it's not the man's fault. It's just it's just sin, you know, that had entered in. But you know, Christ died for all this ungodly acts if we would just, you know, confess our sins to him. And if you hear if you're out there tonight and you may say, Brother Shane, I'm ungodly and I don't believe that God could forgive me. I've just done too much ungodly things and I don't know if he could forgive me. Well I'm here to tell you that he died for all of our ungodly acts. And when you don't have the strength to say no to drugs and strength to uh, pornography and strength to alcohol when you don't have the strength to say no to that you know the bible said that the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak the flesh is so weak but if we will just say god i can't do this on my own strength but i'm coming to you by faith and i i, I asked that you forgive me of my sins and yes i received jesus christ as my lord and savior and uh, i thank you god for forgiving me of all my ungodly evil deeds that i have done and I, I want a new life. I want freedom. I want liberty in Christ. And if that's you tonight, I want you to I want you to pray that prayer before we go to bed tonight. And I'm here to tell you, God will make all things new in your life. Well, this is Brother Shane McCann. I'm about you to come be with us up here at Oasis, where we believe in teaching the truth and telling people the truth. You know, and uh, we have church here Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Tuesday night. God bless you. I'll see you next week.